This video was brought to you by the ILC. Hello there once again, welcome to episode 44. In our previous episode, I showed you how to solve a system of two equations using a matrix. This time, I'm going to show you how to solve a system of three equations using a matrix. Let's have a look. Our matrix reads 1, 0, negative 4, 4, 5, 1, 4, negative 5, 0, negative 2, 5, negative 3, where the first column represents x, the second column represents y, the third column represents z, and then I've drawn a line to show that on the other side of the line you have your constants, which I'm going to represent with c. Remember that our first goal is to get these numbers that I'm circling along this diagonal line in orange. I'm trying to change them to 1. Also, we are trying to get these numbers that I'm boxing in in the lower left corner. All three of these numbers in red are going to become 0. Our first target is going to be this 5 in row 2. Our first objective will be to change row 2. We'll write down all of the numbers that are in the sequence, 5, 1, 4, negative 5. Now the thing we need to ask ourselves is, what is the opposite of 5? Well, what we need to use is negative 5, so that we'll get the 0 that we're after. In order to create that negative 5, we're going to add row 1 times something. In our row 1, we have 1, so 1 times negative 5 will give us the negative 5 that we're after. But we have to multiply the negative 5 times every element in row 1. Negative 5 times 1 gives negative 5. Negative 5 times 0 gives 0. Negative 5 times negative 4 gives 20. And negative 5 times 4 gives negative 20. Let's add them up. 5 minus 5 is 0. 1 plus 0 makes 1. 4 plus 20 makes 24. And negative 5 minus 20 makes negative 25. This will be our new row 2. So let's recopy the matrix. The first row does not change. The second row does change. It is now 0, 1, 24, negative 25. The third row also does not change. It is still 0, negative 2, 5, negative 3, and here's our dividing line. So we've taken care of the 5 here and the 0 here. They're both 0. We still have another target to hit, and that's the negative 2. So we will need to change row 3. So I'm going to write change row 3, and I'll write that we have 0, negative 2, 5, negative 3. Now in order to change row 3, we would not want to use row 1 again. Do you see that if we used row 1, we would end up putting an extra number down here where we already have 0? That would break our 0, and we don't want to do that. So instead, we're going to use row 2 to change row 3, because they already have a 0 in common. So I will add row 2 times something. Now row 2 already has a 0 in the first slot, and we want that this negative 2 that I've boxed in red to become 0. Now what's the opposite of negative 2? That's 2. So what can I multiply this row 2 by in order to get 0, 2 as my starting terms? Well, I've got 1 there, so 1 times 2 gives 2. So let's multiply all of row 2 by 2. 0 times 2 is still 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 24 times 2 is 48. And negative 25 times 2 is negative 50. Now we'll add everything up. 0 and 0 make 0. Negative 2 and 2 also make 0. 5 and 48 makes 53. And negative 3 and negative 50 makes negative 53. This will be our new row 3.
So let's write our matrix one more time. We will have 1, 0, negative 4, 4, because the top row did not change. The second row is now 0, 1, 24, negative 25. It didn't change in this step. And our third row is 0, 0, 53, negative 53. So now all of our targets in the bottom left hand corner are all zero like they're supposed to be. And most of our numbers along the diagonal are one. There's only one thing left to do now. What we need to do is take row three divided by something to make it one. Well, if I want this 53 to become one, it stands to reason, I'll just divide everything by 53. So I'll have 0, 0, 53, negative 53, and divide all the terms by 53. So let's write our matrix one more time. The first two rows still don't change in this step. I will simply recopy them. And now 0 over 53 is 0. 0 over 53 again is still 0. 53 over 53 is 1. Negative 53 over 53 is negative 1. And so now our matrix is in row echelon form like it should be. Now that we have it in row echelon form, let's try to solve. Here once again is our row echelon form matrix. We'll start once again at the bottom row. This time that's row 3. Row 3 has 0, 0, 1, negative 1. Recall that the first column stands for x, the second column stands for y, the third column stands for z, and the fourth column stands for constants. So our row 3 says 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals negative 1. Let's not worry too much about the zeros. We'll just say 1z equals negative 1. Therefore, z is equal to negative 1. Next, we'll go on to row 2. Row 2 says 0x plus 1y plus 24z equals negative 25. So we'll write 1y plus 24z equals negative 25. But we know that z is indeed negative 1, so we replace the z. So we'll have y plus 24 times negative 1 equals negative 25. If we simplify, we'll have y minus 24 equals minus 25. And then we'll add 24 to both sides. The plus 24 and minus 24 cancel out. And y equals negative 25 plus 24 is negative 1. Now that we have y and z, next we go to the top row go to row 1. Row 1 says 1x plus 0y minus 4z equals 4. So we'll write 1x, and we'll leave out y, minus 4z equals 4. Then we replace z with the z that we already know. So we'll have x minus 4 times negative 1 equals 4. If we simplify, we'll have x plus 4 equals 4, subtract 4 from both sides, and everything cancels out. Therefore, all we're left with is x equals 0. So our answer to this will be inside of angular brackets. We'll list x comma y comma z, so we'll have 0, minus 1, minus 1. And there you have it. That's how you solve a three row matrix. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next episode.